Good morning, guys. Um, thank you for joining me this morning. Um, uh, let, let's pray. Father, I thank you for this morning and your time to, our time together and your time to speak to us and teach us your word and what you have to say. Father, I thank you for this awesome privilege uh, to speak your word in this unique way, Father. Endow me with power from on high, God. I pray, Lord God, that through this word, people will be saved, people will be, be delivered, and people will be set free. Lord God, I just pray that you'll go down to the very very marrow of our bones and, and just change us. Do whatever you want to do in our lives. Let this word activate destinies, oh God. Let it bring forth dreams, oh God. Let let it let it reinvigorate visions, oh Father. In the name of Jesus, speak to me, speak through me. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Hi guys. Um, this sermon is called "See the Beauty." And C is just spelled the letter C, the beauty. So all my points today will be starting with the letter C. Um, it's so unique how this, how this sermon came about. I usually have a long story about how my sermons come about, but in this case, the story is not long at all. I was lying in my bed, I think, the night before last. I'm like, Lord, what do you want me to say? And he he gave me this whole thing and had me um, record it the next day. So that's how the sermon came about. And I love reading. I love reading all kinds of books. I love reading books, uh, fiction books, uh, some of them, um, yeah, I love reading romantic fiction, I love reading kind of family stories, I love reading all of that, but I also lately, because of the calling of my life to, pe to preach the gospel and to uh, run an organization and the movie company and the church eventually. Um, the Lord has me reading a lot of uh, books from CEOs of companies to, to learn how they, they run their companies. So I've been reading, um, I read the the book from the Dunkin' Donut CEO. I read the book from the Disney CEO. I I read the book from the Netflix CEO. All great books, by the way. Um, but the best CEO I ever come in contact with is the CEO of Drumroll Please Starbucks. Uh, his name is um what's his name again? Oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> anyway, um he is so awesome, and I love their philosophy and of connecting with people and of relationship with their customers. And they don't, uh, they, at Starbucks, um, it's a very team mentality. Um, they call, they call, um, each other, they don't call, uh, 
employees, they call each other their partners. So they have a very cohesive team mentality. And I was thinking of how beautiful this was, that one of the most um, influential companies in the world, like we all go to Starbucks to get our coffees and whatever, um, they have such a mentality of teamwork. And I was thinking of um, not only their philosophy, but other philosophies of uh, these CEOs, and I kind of came up with my own kind of thing. So today I'm going to talk about see the beauty. First, I'm going to talk about the beauty of commitment. Then I'm going to talk about uh, the beauty of connection and the beauty of collaboration. So first, the beauty of commitment. What I describe commitment as basically is that you will do a task um, regardless of what is going on. So you will do a task with everything you've got regardless of what's going on. And I think today some of us struggle with being committed to something. It's easier to quit than to be uh, committed to something. But what we don't understand is in commitment breeds um, the process of co commitment breeds longevity. The more you are committed to something, the more you will gain longevity with it. Because um, you will never gain longevity with something if you, if you quit it at the first hurdle. Hurdles are meant to strengthen you. They are meant to build you. They are meant to make you uh, tougher, make you build your spiritual muscle, as I like to say. But if you quit, and if you're kind of, uh, for lack of a better term, flaky about everything, you will never see the benefits, and you will never gain uh longevity you will never have longevity in your job in your marriage in your uh any personal relationships unless you may remain commit committed and commitment takes guts commitment takes guts it's easy to quit it's easy to say i give up it's easy to say like uh, this is not working for me, I'm out of here. Um, but it's much harder to be committed. And the Lord is calling for true commitment. True commitment means you're, uh, you're doing whatever, rain or shine or good or bad. You, you're doing it, you're staying in it. And commitment means staying power and the Lord is calling for true commitment he's tr calling for true commitment to him true commitment to ourselves and true commitment to each other the reason why we can't be committed to God to ourselves is because we're not committed uh, to God. We we think we are. We pray every day. We do everything. But that's external commitment. Uh, he wants internal commitment. So 
what is x what is external first has to be internal so let me say that again whatever is external has to first be internal so you want external beauty you want external you want people to just um have a real connection with you um you want people to you know just uh want to be around you well make it in make it internal first because what is external first has to be internal because if it's external first it will die fast external only dies fast so if your beauty is only external and there and, and you only work on your external part you only put your makeup on you do your hair you brush your teeth you do all that necessary stuff but you don't put the same work on the inside you don't um meditate on the word of god you don't pray you don't you know do the inner work that you need to that external work that you're doing will just fade and at the end of the day you'll wonder why am i so empty when i have everything the reason why is you haven't done the internal work to match your external reality so you must do the internal work first because i find a lot today is about the external external buy a new car and you'll be happy get this haircut look like this celebrity person or do lifts like this celebrity or do this like this person it's all external but external is empty if there's no internal to match it up so if the but if there's internal first the external adds a layer and together it shines through uh so if you have beauty on the inside of you it, it it can join with your external with your outside and together it'll shine through and people will just you'll be a magnet for for people and even if you're not even if people still draw away from you you'll be happy cuz your internal will match your external and the lord is really wanting you to make the first um commitment the lord is wanting you to make is to yourself no actually the first commitment he he's wanting you to make is to him and the second commitment he wants you to make is to yourself so don't give up on god don't give up on yourself and don't give up on others so he's saying he wants you to be committed the next c is connect connection the beauty of connection now he wants you to not only be committed and connected to your um committed to yourself but he also wants you to be connected to yourself a, a lot of people aren't connected to themselves 
when I say connected to yourself, I mean to know yourself, to know who you are as a person, to know how you roll as a person, to know what your likes and dislikes are, to know what your moods are, to know when you're feeling this and that. And he wants you to be so connected to yourself that that you can tell when you're about to have a meltdown. A, a lot of people don't know themselves enough to know when they're going to have a meltdown or when they're going to... Um, what they're feeling because they're not connected enough to themselves to know. But first, before you're connected to yourself, you have to be connected to the one who created you. God is longing for his children to have true connection with him. He wants to have a connection with you where he can speak to you, where he can minister to you, where he can speak right into your situation. And to, to build a connection with God, you need to start having a relationship with him and start small. You don't need to start with this big prayer. Start where you are. Connection is built. It doesn't just happen. You have to build a connection with God, with yourself, and with others. And how you build a connection with anyone is through a relationship. Just like I said a minute ago, that you had to have a relationship with God. 